Hi there, it's Jane from Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. We are continuing with the hexi, hexagon quilt. I'm so happy I remember that it's not an octagon, it's a hexagon. So I have, and I really tried to get this whole thing in on the screen, I've started, I'm going to be holding this vertically next to my door. So I started with these really beautiful light blues and I worked all the way down to these dark blues with some of these consistent white um, hexagons. I did that with Farmhouse White. So today I'm going to show you how I'm going to decoupage to kind of... Um, give this a little something extra, and also I'm gonna be using some silver leaf on this. So the first thing that we're going to do, and I'm gonna decide where do I want my silver leaf, and I think I'm gonna put it on these kind of mid-range blues. Well, we'll start with one and see how it looks. So when you're working with leaf, you need, when you're leafing, you need size, that's the glue that holds the leaf on, and you need some leaf, and this is silver leaf. So I'm gonna do this kind of dry brush the leaf on, so I'm not gonna need to tape these. Um, well, actually, you know what, I will, just to cover myself because I'll be annoyed if it goes out onto something else. So I'll show you, I'll do one today, and I will post pictures of this when it's all done and hanging, when I can get my husband to hang it next to the door. I hope you guys saw that I posted pictures of the giant barn quilt that I did for the side of our, it looks like a barn, but it's actually a garage, and it's shiplap. And I made it with cedar shiplap also. We had some left over when we built our house. And I did that in chalk paint with absolutely nothing on it. And it's gone through winter. All the storms, the snow, the rain, really, really well. So um, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you're like me and you like to experiment and you don't mind things chipping, cracking, peeling, um, kind of evolving or totally failing. Um, I didn't think it would, it hasn't. But when you do something like that, you know, there's so many things that come into play. What's the surface you're painting on? What type of paint are you using? And if you're gonna do what I did, you need to be open to all kinds of things happening or not. All right, I taped out my kind of mid-blue hexagon, and here's the size. And I'm actually gonna get a rag here because I wanna dry brush this. Let's get that out of the way. So I'm gonna dip, I'm using a natural bristle brush. And once you put on, and I'm kind of just winging it here. When you put this on, the size, it has to come to tack. So it has to dry a little bit. And right now it's milky, you can't see it, it's milky. When it comes to tack, I'll be able to tap my finger. It won't come off on my finger. It will be sticky though, it'll be tacky. So we're, while we wait for that, I'm gonna show you how I decoupage, which I'm really excited about. So for the Merry Makers box this month, and I'll show you a few of them, I was, we're, you, we're going to be using, this is a little sneak peek, we're making these houses. How beautiful are these? And they're all, you know, for you to put on your mantle. So if anybody's interested in the Merry Makers, this is, this is our, our Christmas in July box. But I used this really beautiful um, tissue and I use little scraps of it for um, the fronts. Here's the backs. 
and I had some left over. So I thought, wow, that'll look really good on these lighter colored hexagons. So I'll show you how I do that. And I'm not gonna cover the entire hexagon with the paper. I'm only going to do like part of it. So I had a scrap here. It's a butterfly and I kind of played around with it and thought about, well, where do I want it? That would look cool. So what I'm gonna do, and I have to move this because remember our size is coming to tack, is here's, remember this is the template that I used for our hexagons. I'm gonna put it down on the butterfly And I don't advise you to work on top of your work like I am. And I'm just gonna make some lines where I'll cut it with a pencil. Grab my scissors. Hopefully I can see that. Ugh, not really. You know what I'm gonna do? The other side. Hmm, excuse me while I compose. Yeah, like this, okay. So again, put it down on the wrong side. And this tissue that I'm using, it's, it's kind of like a strong tissue and I honestly don't remember where I got it. I'm a collector like so many of us crafters are. So I'm just gonna cut out my butterfly fragments. All right, and I have two of them. So I'll do these two up here. I know. Actually, our, our, we're gonna pause on that for a second because our size has come to tack. So going back to leafing, and this is so easy. So we brushed on, we masked off with tape, we dry brushed on our um, size, and now we're just gonna take our book of silver leaf like this. I'm gonna flip it over. And I kinda, I'm a lefty, so I'm holding the spine of the book in my left hand, and I'm burnishing with my right hand from the spine out, not back and forth, because it will end up kind of ruffling up your book. Okay, I need to grab a brush. So, Here's our silver leaf on here. And I'm gonna take, I'm taking a natural bristle brush and I'm just gonna go like this to make sure I'm burnishing it down. And now you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of lifting it off of all the places that, that were not brushed on, that didn't receive the size. And it does make a mess. So you see what's happening here. And I'll hold it up so you can see. Whoop, there it is. All right, so it's starting to come off. And I'm going to get the rest off. And, you, and I like using a natural bristle brush because the bristles are stiff enough to lift off. That leaf and let's take off the tape and see how this is shaping up. And there's our silver. And I know I didn't put that much size. So it may take you a few seconds to kind of 
really get that off of there. I want me to look at how pretty. So it, it gives you a little, a little bling. And I just think that's really beautiful. So that's how I'm gonna add a little, a little brightness. And now let's go back to our decoupage. So here are my two pieces. I've got, this is just some type, like a newspaper kind of a thing. And I'm gonna put that up here on this one. And then maybe my butterfly. Hmm. Now I'm gonna put my butterfly. This is how I work. Is this how you guys work? You have to kind of move around, see how it looks. All right, I like that. And I'll put my newspaper down like that. So we take our decoupage medium. I have a little bit in a little antique bowl I found. I work, I buy these when I go to Goodwill. I just buy tons when I find these little containers. Dry my brush off. And then what we do, get rid of the silver leaf, is brush on the decoupage where you're gonna be placing. And you don't have to be too careful because the decoupage dries clear and this one's matte. I don't want any shine. I want only the silver to be the shiny part. And then I just take my butterfly fragment, put it down, and then you dip your brush back into the decoupage. Oops, and my finger's stuck. I'm lifting it all up, there we go. And you really wanna brush this down. And we'll see how this does outside. And there we go, and I'm gonna just add it to the rest of this. Okay, so there's our butterfly. And now I'll show you again how I do this down here with this kind of newspaper print. Now I am really laying it on because I'm using, remember, milk paint. I used Miss Mustard Seeds uh, milk paint and one color from um, Amy Howard's Toscana milk paint. And milk paint's rough. So any of you that love like that whole salt wash kind of rough look, just use some of these milk paints and you'll, you'll get that rough look without having to add anything. All right, I'm just gonna place my little piece here. Try not to stick my fingers in it. And same thing, and I really need to press this down. There we go. You could just see when it adheres. And this piece of wood is also super, super rough. And there it goes. And let me show you, put my brush in some water, what this all looks like. Well, it's, so they're still wet. And there's our silver, and there's our butterfly up there. So, I am gonna do a little bit more, not a lot, because I, I really want the color to do the talking here. And I'm going to 
possibly do, and actually I'll show you that now, a little bit of distressing. And I've got an old block here. And I'll show you now. I don't want to do too much because I have a feeling it's going to do that on its own. So I've, I have an old sanding block. And I'm going to start with the finer side. And I'm just going to give it a little, let me show you before. So you see how kind of consistent as much as milk paint can be consistent, the paint is. And when I do this, it just gives it a little added depth. I don't do a lot of sanding, distressing, but for something like this, I think it looks, I really like how it looks. It looks really good. Now using my natural bristle brush, and if you are sensitive to dust, please wear a mask. If I have a big project, I always wear a mask. show you what this looks like so you see how it brought out more of the saw marks because remember this is a really old piece of wood milled wood and just kind of hit some high spots and here sometimes you'll get these white little white flecks, little white pieces of pigment if you don't mix it well enough like I guess I didn't and I love that. I embrace it. If I'm using milk paint, I know that's going to happen, especially with me because I have no patience. But it chipped a little bit, chipped over here and the sanding helps to kind of lift that. So there it is. I'm going to let this completely dry, maybe add a couple more spots. It's, there's a rule sometimes, I hate to say rule, um, the rule of three. So I like to do things in three spots. When you do it in two spots, your eye tends to go back and forth. But if you do it in three, it creates a kind of rhythm, a composition. So I'm going to add one more maybe smaller piece of this, the little scraps that I have from this tissue and definitely going to do uh, two more spots of the silver leaf and lift a little bit of this off so it's not so much. And you can actually do that if you want to distress leaf. You do it with a sanding block also. I want to break it up a little bit on the inside of that hexagon. And that's what that does. Grab your brush. Don't breathe it in. And it also kind of um, gives it a, it, it, when you use sand, a sanding block or steel wool is really good to do this with. It gives the surface of whatever color leaf you're using a more burnished kind of a satin look. So it's not so bright. So if you're leafing something and it looks really super bright, Grab some steel wool, the really fine steel wool, um, or a very fine sanding block and just give it a little sand. So that's it, you guys. Um, I will probably come on next week with hopefully a new project, but I'll show you what this looks like all finished up and I'll have some photographs of it, I hope hung up by my door. All right, you guys. Oh, by the way, join my text club. I have the number today. 
It's 860-385-6369. I'll let you know when I go live, if I'm having any special stuff going on, new products in, which I know is a big thing for you guys because you're ask, always asking me when something's going to be restocked, when it's coming back in. For the beautiful Merry Makers, which is just, I just love this one. Um, this is our Christmas Village. Go to um, surfaceanthology.com and you can join the Merry Maker subscription box. And of course, for you quilters, there's my um, painted block of the month. And again, you could go to surfaceanthology.com for that. Have a great day, you guys, and happy painting. Any questions at all, please ask in the comments. I'll see you next time.